Houston, 6,000 years ago, he promised that the seed of the woman would come and give uh, the birth to a savior. 4,000 years ago, or 2,000 years ago, that happened, didn't it? Our Lord sent forth the Savior. All right, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. Remember, the Lord's giving John this revelation. He said, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice was which I heard was as it is were of a trumpet talking with me. Which said, John, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. It's not a maybe so, it's a must. Amen. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. There was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which were the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a great sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes, before and behind. The first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had the face as a man. The fourth beast was like a fine eagle. The four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And when Isaiah saw this, they were called seraphims. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, Isaiah said that were two that flew, they covered their face, two they covered their feet, and with two wings they did fly. Verse 9. And when the beast was give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and they worship him that liveth forever and ever. And they crest cast their crown before the throne of God, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. In our text, John was about to be shown the future of the world and the heavens. And he said there are some things which must be hereafter. That must part is what I want us to dwell on today. It is going to happen. So he said, John, get your phone ready. Get your camera ready. Get your camcorder, we used to say, ready. Because that's what we always use, wasn't it? Because I'm going to show you something. And I'm going to have you to reveal it to my people. But by the way, you remember a point which we will not be covering in our main part of our message. The Lord told finally, John said, don't write anymore. You remember that? He said, that's all I want you to write. So uh, part of it remains unclear. But what John was about to see was not speculation. If you look down on your paper again at, at one verse, Revelation 1 verse 19. The Lord said to John, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter, particularly the word shall. The same thing as must. It is going to be. Actually, 
in God's plan, it's already happened. I already printed there that it will be. And we'll see it as it unfolds. John, what he saw, again, let me say, was not speculation. <laughs> not like our weather forecast. Some years back, I was in the car, parts of town, had the radio on, and the weatherman said, no rain today. <laughs> I just cut my wipers off then, because I think that's rain. It's on my <laughs> windshield. By the way, they say a weatherman is... 90% right, 10% of the time. <laughs> they do have modern means of knowing the weather's what sometimes headed our way, and we're great, grateful for that. But folk, what may happen with the weather doesn't always happen, does it? But folk, what God said about the earth and the heavens is going to happen, and that's why we need to live our life accordingly. John was not having his palms read, but the songs were about to be read or unveiled. What the prophets had prophesied in the Psalms. It was to be. The Lord knew. Uh, the psychics will come and tell you things that... <laughs> Their predictions of things. Uh, I have in my house where I answer the phone in the uh, uh, the living area of, of the house. I've got a little cartoon thing I cut out some years ago, and I've got it taped there. We had an old window air conditioning unit, and I've got it taped up there on it. It's a picture of Ziggy. Y'all know Ziggy, the little cartoon character. Uh, he said, uh, uh, he's on the phone talking, and he said, if you're really who you say you are, then you know my credit card number already. I'll we'll have to give it to you. <laughs> but a lot of things in life are uncertain, aren't they? Just as uncertain as it could be. Linda and I stopped the other day up there where they've had that bad accident out of Mount Enterprise. With those two uh, ladies, 33 and 34, life was snuffed out. They were traveling up the way, and in a second, as they were meeting this 18-wheeler, the left wheel on the front, on the driver's, on the front part of the truck, blew out, and it pulled them over directly into their SUV. It exploded, and all that's left there, we saw a burnt shoe the other day when we stopped by there. Folk, in a split second, they're here, and the next moment, they're gone. Folk, that's how life is. That's why James said, life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. We're all here just for a short time. A lot of things in life, though, still are uncertain. Uh, they said the stock market took a big fall this week. <laughs> I can't afford to invest much in the stock market, but uh, I'd probably be watching it. <laughs> but the paper said that uh, they were a little concerned because the stock market took a big loss. But if someone actually knew what he was going to do, they'd get rich, couldn't they? But they don't know. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes maybe they can guess. But I think back over my life, and I look at the fads of today. And I would not have thought of the fads as things turned out back when I was a young man. Rock music, and even still rap music, 
It's not music to me, but that's what they call it. Would you think it would be that predominant as it is today? No, sir. And I see something, and folk, if, if you have one, don't take offense to it, because Brother Bobby got his while he was in war, but tattoos. I see tattoos on everybody wherever I go, and folk, you shouldn't mar the body up that God gave you. But if you have, then the Lord will forgive you if you ask him. <laughs> but I wouldn't mar my body up to start with, but it's a fad. I see signs wherever I go, tattoos given here. Now who would have thought that years back? Now look at the clothes that people wear. I see these folk now, with they got pants on, they got holes cut all in them. And it looked like they'd been thrown across the chicken coop for about a year and picked up <laughs> and sold for a bunch of money. Can you believe that, the fad we live in? I mean, it's a fad. If you're going to get with a program, you may as well. There's some of these clothes, I don't know how some of them get in. I look at them, I say, they're going to tear up before they get them off. But think about that. The point I'm trying to make is that things are always changing, aren't they? The folk, God's plan doesn't change. It's going to be exactly as the scripture tells us it's going to be. There's some things we can know. And God was about to show John these things. And John was going to show us. First thing, we know we all must leave this old earth. I heard that fellow say to a little boy the other day, son, don't you want to go to heaven? Yeah, I want to go to heaven, but not, I'm not getting in line. You got to die to get there. <laughs> What's that little boy's answer? He, he wasn't ready to go to heaven because he had to die to get there. If you think about that a moment, that's true with this, isn't it? The Bible tells us all of us are going to die. Nature shows us, doesn't it? We should all then prepare for it. Uh, we all watched, or at least some of us watched part of it. If you had the TV on here these past few days, you saw some of George Bush's funeral. And they showed him as they put his body on the uh, train. And they said that was his idea, that he wanted to take that ride into College station on a train. So he prepared for that much of it, didn't he? And we only hope that he prepared for the inevitable, the, the stand before the Lord thing. Because, folks, it's going to happen. We know who controls life. Amen. And, folks, don't get the idea for a moment that you're in control. You're not in control. He has a power over life. He gave it, and he'll take it away. And he won't be at your convenience, by the way. He's going to take it at his time. But trust me, he will take it. He is an author of life. We know that life has a certain amount of problems, doesn't it? We all face. Uh, everyone in here has some obstacles and what have you that we have to get over or around or something because we all face them. Why is that? Because of the Adamic curse. When Mother Eve took the forbidden fruit and Adam followed suit, it passed upon all men. And the curse was that they should earn, should eat of the, of the things of the earth until he went back to it. And by the sweat of thy brow, he'd be forced to make a living. But we do have problems, all of us, we will have them. But the best part about it, we have someone to help us with our problems. And again, that's the author of life. 
We know that the gospel, the Bible tells us, is going to be preached unto all the world, and then shall the end come. Oh, God loves sinners, doesn't he? That's our message, that God still loves sinners. But he's provided the sacrifice in the person of his only begotten son. We know that our Lord is coming back to receive us unto himself. We heard in this morning's Sunday school class, John 14, where the Lord promised, he said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. We know that that is a fact, that Jesus is coming. Nothing can stop it, folk. We don't know the date, do we? The Lord warns us about setting dates. But I can tell you what time it's going to be. Got your teacher, didn't it? We'd be five o'clock somewhere on the earth because somewhere around the earth we got a cycle going on, hadn't we? Fifty years ago today, I was in the time zone that's eight hours ahead of us in Jerusalem. My first trip there was eight, was exactly fifty years ago today, the first Sunday, uh, or the second one. I left on December the second and was there in uh, Jerusalem. Somewhere on earth, it's going to be a certain time, right? It's going to be night parts of the earth. It's going to be day parts of the earth. We have that 24-hour cycle, don't we? But, folks, the important thing is that what hour it may be, we need to be ready. We know the Bible says the dead in Christ are going to be raised first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We know the Lord tells us there's going to be a battle going on in the Mideast when that time comes. And our Lord going to finish that battle. He's coming on a white horse and established he's going to set up his kingdom of peace. He's going to have us to rule and reign with him for 1,000 years, which is called the millennial reign. And the scripture says there'll be peace on the earth. Now, folks, we're talking about, not talking about heaven and the heavens. We're talking about on the earth. There's going to be peace on the earth such as the world has never known for 1,000 years. But then John tells us that when the 1,000 years is over, he saw that great white throne and those that were lost, those that, didn't, that missed out on the first resurrection are going to stand before that great white throne because their name's not written in the Lamb's book of life. And then the heavens and the earth pass away. And that's when the eternal of the heavens began. John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's what John saw. God showed it to him. And folk, in case you hadn't figured it out, we've got better things to come. We're here just a little while. We need to make the most of it while we're here. And my prayer is always that the Lord will take and use me as he would as an instrument in his hand to proclaim his word. The best part about it when that thousand years transpires the scripture says 
Satan is bound and cast into the pit for how long? 1,000 years. But he said after the 1,000 years is over, Satan is loosed for a little season. And he goes out and gathers the goat nations or those that still reject Christ. And together they meet their doom. Now, folks, what I'm telling you comes from the scripture. You got a question about any of it? I'll be glad to sit down with you and we'll go over it. But I'm telling you things that the scripture said is bound to happen. It's going to happen. Do I understand all of it? No. Look at your last verse on your paper. This is what happens after the thousand years is over. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, folks, he didn't say they might be burned up. He said they're going to be burned up. That means whatever material thing that you put so much pride in, whatever you in, whatever you got materially that you, you treasure, can't take it with you. Impossible. But John said he saw that new heaven and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And folk, we know this. The scripture says it's going to be. And then as I come to my concluding thoughts, we know that Jesus receives all that come to him. John 6, verse 37. He said, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. What does that tell me? That tells me that anybody that wants to be saved can be saved if they'll come to Jesus. He said, him that cometh unto me, I won't turn him away. I'll not cast him out. Problem is, is some people have a problem getting to Jesus, don't they? That's why these fellows go out, uh, went out yesterday, and they'll go out uh, this afternoon and knock on doors and talk to people about their soul. And when they get a chance, they say the, the sinner's prayer with them. And the last... Uh, yesterday, I believe they told me there was four, is that right, yesterday? Four people were saved yesterday because they came to Jesus. Folk, the Lord saves whomever will come to him. And that being true, the title of our message, again, our action should be based on what we know. Let's act on what we know. I've heard people say in years past, oh, I've been too mean, the Lord won't save me. Look, that's not true. The devil wants you to believe that. But the Lord said, him that will come unto me, I will not turn him away. 